This video contains content sponsored by John Wilson Blades and MK Blades. Opinions discussed in this video do not reflect the views of John Wilson or MK. Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees and welcome back Jonathan Byer. Jonathan, welcome back to The Skating Lesson. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yes, well, we were born to make history, Jonathan Byer, in case you didn't know it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. It's the start of 2017. Okay. Well, there was some exciting news this week. Obviously, we're here to discuss Japanese nationals, but let's, let's go back because basically people are still very upset about the 2014 Olympics, and this is the one competition that will never die. Correct. Uh, and we are still finding out about the water report. And there have been some reports coming out that Adelina Sotnikova tested that her sample had a type one scratch. Scratch. So, right, so this a horizontal scratch on the inside of, of the lid. Yes. Okay. So now other people had something more severe, like this Alexander Zubkov, the Bob Sledder. Okay. He had seven scratches. Seven. Uh, technical, yeah, he had seven scratches on his, a technical defect and fiber remnants. So all in all, Adelina's like on like the mild spectrum of what they've noticed on her container. Okay. So the scratches, but, only the Russian people scra had scratches on their bottles apparently they're they're only researching the russian models right so yeah. they're, they're only identifying the russian tubes that have the scratches inside of them now is how you I, know that we're yeah. going to wind up looking at every single bottle now they are not going to let this die because... right of course <laughs> uh, and also and my, i don't believe that the yeah. athletes close them themselves we're going to find out all sorts of things there have been so many interesting comments and i know you have a lot of thoughts because i do okay so my first thought is also how funny she was listed as figure skater a 0848 and i kind of was hoping her number would be 24601 just because that would be like a nice lame <laughs> um but so right now she's done nothing wrong right they just found a scratch so now they have to go like do all this crazy extra research so it course, might be like the original I'll... sample has been gotten rid of so they're never going to know right well oh they have oh see i didn't even there's so many conflicting reports because they're mean, why would you save the dirty urine if the dirty urine existed or the potentially dirty urine existed oh i see what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. Well, and the New York Times came out with that good article with all these quotes and all these things about the new guy that was, you know, put in charge of the Russian anti-doping thing. And then the next day, Russia came out and they were like, no, 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 all those quotes are taken out of context. So then I don't understand who to believe or well, what's happening. Originally, it, the New York Times posted an article where it made it sound like there was a spokesperson from Russia that was admitting to a doping uh, on an institutional level versus yeah, like a federal. An institutional yeah. level doping program, but they said that it didn't go up to Vladimir Putin. And then the next day they came out and said that that wasn't the case and that was taken out of context. Right. <laughs> Very strange. And Don't know Well, but then they had these quotes from uh, the new sports official, the 81-year-old Vitaly Smirnov, have a drink. Um, and he said, um, he wants to know why the athletes were even agreed to be doped, which made me a little angry because I felt like that was already putting it on the athletes and not on the institution. I talked to a lot of Russian people about this because this is obviously a hot topic issue. And contrary to popular belief in the comment sections on YouTube, <laughs> I actually am a big fan of Russia and Russians and Russian things and music, and skating. <laughs> so I talked to a lot of them and I was like, what, what's going on? Where's this fire coming from? And they were like, well, for us, a lot of Russian people feel like they're being picked on. They're being, they, they have like a persecuted feeling because they feel that everyone does it, but no one's getting investigated except for them. They feel that the, in, like the investigation is politically motivated, which may or may not be true. But it's, if, you're, if you're tampering with all the samples, it doesn't matter why they are investigating you, you have to answer for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one friend in particular was also saying, um, 
the big argument comes in, they say, well, everyone does it. And then the response is, well, no, not everyone does it. And you, you, yours is, is sponsored by the government. Like, it's like a government thing. And their lines between the Ministry of Sport and government are quite blurred. Mm -hmm. So they don't, I think they're confused at why they, we think like Vladimir, Vladimir Putin personally is like swapping out urine samples and cocktails. But it's so intermixed, their government and their sports ministry. They separate. It's, it's hard to separate who's doing what and who should be held accountable for what. I don't know. And then you think about, okay, what happens if we find out her sample was, you know, tampered with, she's totally guilty, which we don't know. But if they determine that, then yes, I think they should shift the medals. Do I think they should ban Russia from Pyeongchang? I don't know. It would be really sad. Like for ladies skating, whoever won the gold medal without any Russian women there, would, I think it would feel pretty hollow. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't I mean, know. That's my thought. It's hard at this point. It. I don't know if the IOC would really take that measure. They didn't take it for real when all this came up before. And it seems like now there's a lot of capitulating and triangulating. And there's a lot of power struggles and dynamics here. It is really interesting. There was an interesting quote originally in the New York Times article that alluded to that the Russians don't because they felt that they wouldn't get the same medical exemptions that other people got, which is a really strange logic. But then we right. don't know if they applied and were denied. But then they all it's it's such a strange thing. And it raises a whole lot of other issues. But I think at the well, end, I think it I think at the end of this day, this competition from 2014 has just been tainted. Uh, it's just one of those events, like the 2002 pairs, whether you agree with the result or not. I don't think anyone agrees with you know two gold medals. I think when you go back and you look at what happened and the fact Adelina's win with the panel as what as it was and everything that happens like that is going to be debated forever. I think that if it, it, it signs are looking to the fact that her sample was tampered with. They're never going to know for sure if she don't because that sample is gone. Either you do a second gold medal or I think you probably have to strip her. The thing is, is that if she, they strip Adelina's gold medal, there are a lot of people that are never going to buy that as legitimate. They'll still consider her the gold medalist. I think in Russia they would still well, consider that, her the gold medalist. Is that how gold wants to get a bronze medal or is that how Carolina wants a silver? I mean, how horrible to be like, I guess it's a silver. Like, it's so like... It's so hollow, that kind of victory, I would well, think. Well, for the sake of Korea, they should, whether the IOC gives them or whether Korea, they should have a medal ceremony for Unikim at the Olympic Games. Whether they give no, their no. own medal or they steal it from it's Adelina's it. neck and give it to her. But could you imagine the ratings <laughs> for the Olympics? That is what we need, okay? And we are just saying this is all hypothetical because we know no charges have been brought against her. But it's just a matter of what, what would happen if that's the case. I don't... Yeah, I don't Gosh, have any more YouTube it's, a, it's a touchy subject for everyone. It was a very touchy competition. Well, for I hope that you like Japan because we're here to discuss Japanese nationals. And let's start off because Jack Gallagher had an interesting article about Mao Asada this weekend that he thinks that she should either retire or change coaches. He wants her to go to Brian Orser. He's like, Brian Orser would take her. Uh, I mean, of course he's going to take Mao Asada. And I thought at this point, this is really interesting. I think that Brian Orser has a million and one students, so I don't know if taking Mao is actually something that's feasible. Do you think Mao yeah. should continue at this point? Do you think she needs a coaching change? Do you think it's, what do you, what's your take on Mao Asada? Obviously a 12th place finish here. Not the way you want to set up your run for a third Olympic team. Yeah, correct. We, in the United States, we may have squeaked in a medal for fourth, but we've got nothing for 12. Yeah. You're just way up on your own for that one. Um, here's the thing. These are the best programs, in my opinion, that she's ever had. Ever had. Short and free skate. I think the it's the short... best free skate of the season, the choreography. Oh, absolutely. Uh, all the, and she did bring back the phallic dress, I'm just saying. Okay, but uh, um, in her spin, at the end of her, I think, which one is it? The end of the flying camel spin. I wrote at around 1.55 in the Nationals um, like video, if you watch it. She ends with these little hops yes. that are so perfectly in tune with the music that's do going at the same time. It like blew my mind. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, devil's in the detail. No, like God is in the details for this mean? girl. Was that Go all ahead. of her own hair? I don't even know. I was so fascinated I by her entire look in the short program. <laughs> 
Yeah, it had a bit of a share quality to it, didn't it? <laughs> it's her farewell. So tour. I'm torn. <laughs> well, she's had several also, Ma uh, Mal has had several. I, like, I feel like when I go back and watch her programs, they're like, this will be her last competition ever. <laughs> um, she, if she had retired, we wouldn't see these glorious pieces of art that I think these programs are, but they're completely non-competitive. Although going into the long, she was almost like, eh, whatever, I'll just go for broke. She went for I was everything. Like, I mean, the triple axle, triple and flip, the triple, flip loop. triple loop. I was like, what are you doing? Like, this is crazy. Crazy respect, obviously, for her. Yeah, of course. I, it was interesting with Jack Gallagher's article. I thought it was really interesting that he, he you know, commented that she had been with Raphael. But then she should go to Orser, and I thought, why not send her back to Raphael if you're saying she needs a change? I do. Why, do we know why? I know she like had the Raphael Tatiana combination for a while, and then just went to Rosava. So I don't know why she done last Rafael. year that it was because he found out years later that it was because her mother was sick. And oh. obviously, I feel sometimes with Raphael's stories that maybe they're stories. But uh, I thought that because uh, I had read something else about ice time in Japan yeah. or something. That's why she needed to go back. But. I mean, I think that if if that is the case, or she wants to spend some time working with Raphael, I think that would be interesting. I don't think I honestly think it's health related at this point. If she has a serious knee injury, well, um, so maybe yeah. Now take your time and actually heal it. But I, the send thing her with to that magic from. doctor in Germany, who allegedly <laughs> <laughs> heals everyone, like Usain she, Bolt, and she can stay with me. It's yes, no problem. She can stay with you. Uh, that doctor but, in Munich, and uh, then you will be just fine for the Olympics next season. No problem, no problem. Maybe one horizontal scratch. Yes. <laughs> um, but I think that, like, ever since she did the technique change, mm -hmm. and I guess I see more flow out of her jumps, I guess, but, like, really I never understood this whole phenomena of her reworking everything and bringing it back. I never quite understood it, and I never quite thought Sato was the right fit. But I don't know if I would think Brian Orser is the right fit either. I, that's not who I would have said. No, I, I, she no, wanted to redo it. I think at this point, an entirely new coach wouldn't work. So I think she either yeah. goes back yeah. to Yamada, goes to Artunian, or goes, uh, you know, and I don't think leaving full time, I don't think a coach is that Mao has so many years of experience that I don't think it's a coach, it's, I don't think it's a motivation issue. I, I think it's really a health issue. and what her body can do unless there's a she secret. sold she sold these programs much more like at the trophy eric bombard i was like oh honey just go sit down just yes. you don't want to do this you look i mean she was just tired looking she looked in pain she did she she wasn't having fun but here even though she had all the technical problems especially in the short she was like selling and selling and like the energy was there and i was like i don't want her to retire and go do a show because she won't do programs like this at a show well, she'll be luckily, in a spotlight you know whitney houston or something realistically, you know she doesn't appear i mean i haven't looked at mao's bank account lately but from what the reports have been over the years she has plenty of sponsors and is doing just fine and i'm sure the tv uh networks may pay her an appearance fee the way skaters do get paid by certain networks when you're at that level i i she doesn't need to go to the olympics again to right. uh, cash in i think she could keep skating for as long as she wants to and we'll keep watching so yeah. i don't i mean if she wants to make the olympics again i think look she has to get healthy if she wants to make a run for it obviously she needs the triple axel it didn't look particularly trained or uh, but it seemed like a little off the cuff, like, eh, yeah. ah, why not? <laughs> Let's see what happens. But even with the triple axle fall, I thought the program, even going for broke on the triple loop, which looked, you know, like a double carrot, it was really as she got into the second half, you know, with the fall and the triple sow and the flip that just buried her at this competition. Because yeah. as beautiful as the programs are, there's not much that you can do when the mistakes start to add up. Which I'd like, because I apparently have skating ADD today, mm -hmm. I would like to bring up a little Sonia Bianchetti quote. Yes, okay, let's hear it. <laughs> okay, I did if I was like, come on in, Sonia. Okay, um, so she wrote an article after Grand Prix Final mm -hmm. where she was like, um, oh, I didn't bring in the quote. I didn't, oh, no, I did. I printed it out because I'm a nerd. Okay. Here it is. Okay. 
Although figure skating continues to attract me, I must admit that except in very rare cases, I miss what made our sport so special. The art, the creativity, the interpretation, and the expression of music, the capability of the skaters to transfer their joy and inner feelings to the public. Mm -hmm. And I was like, correct, Sonia, that is correct. Yes. So her proposal, she was saying that the um, technical and the component scores are not even equal right now. Mm -hmm. Also correct. And she was like, even if you're getting all tens in components, it still doesn't matter because the, the technical outweighs all of it. Especially for so, the men. Yeah. yeah, especially for the men and maybe peers or something. And she was saying, if you switch it to 60%, the component score for the free skate, she's like, I feel like it will start to even out. And then fan favorite, it's like Mao, Jason Brown, whomever has these beautiful programs but are lacking in the technical content could still maybe be a factor. Yeah, as long as they don't start awarding components for the for the Boyang Jin programs that have zero. Well, that, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, you would then have to award them appropriately. But I just thought, especially that hit home with me with this Mao program because yeah. I was like, I would make we're all making a point not just because she's who she is, but because of what the program was and how she skated. Yeah, I'm gonna make time for the twelfth place girl. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think comparing Mao to someone like Rika Hongo, you just see so much more of what. Mao has to offer, and then you look at someone like Rika, who's been brought up in this IJS system. She has probably never had to really do a spiral sequence in at least many years. Correct. And you can tell. I think yeah. when you when you watch this program, it's about whether or not there are transitions in choreography versus not whether or not they're actually good or they're actually meaningful right. or musical or if she ever has nice posture or nice flow. It's really, it's really so unesthetically mm -hmm. like pleasing. Like I, I, I just don't understand. And you know, she had that long program to Lawrence of Arabia that Akiko actually choreographed and then she scrapped it to go back to that gem <laughs> that was the river dance program. And I thought, oh my gosh. Why? Like, wow, I'm just, just not a fan. Uh, you can tell she tries. She's trying. Yes. She thinks, I feel like she thinks she's emoting. Unfortunately. And she is like, not, yeah. She it's, has oh. absolutely no extension. She doesn't have a neck. And the neck that she does have is pitched forward with the rounded shoulders. Yeah. And then she, her legs don't extend. And on top of it, she's got the really boxy skates and knees. She her tangled bit. up. Yeah, she looks tangled, yes. like, in a knot, yeah. Yeah, she's very lucky that Dick Button isn't commentating. Uh, <laughs> or on the judging panel. It, unfortunately, for someone like her, I think that when you grow up in this system where their em the emphasis is on the technical, especially because the way the components are rewarded, especially at some of these competitions, she has no incentive to ever improve. And you look at that and you wonder. I guess, but even the technical content is flawed aesthetically it's yes. so yeah i just i mean she was fourth once fifth once in the world it blows my mind i don't get i don't understand unfortunately yeah i mean i think for here in the short program i noticed that she had a a um, you know a strap in her dress behind the neck and it to me mm. just emphasized i just kept looking at her neck and how yeah. forward, pitch forward strong it tension to it yeah, yeah. it was um not an attractive uh, program. Interesting though is that the fact that she had a pretty good short, but the free, I could tell that she was really tense and off before. You could just tell that she wasn't getting any of the her timing, the bending of her knee was completely off. The whole program, landing on the whole blade, the two and a half yeah. loop, the lo it was just a mess. It was just yeah. all shoulders, yeah. all yeah. It was it, it it was proof to me that Akiko Suzuki was born with that talent. Mm -hmm. It was not this coach, Hiroshi Nakuba or whatever, Nakubo, that gave her her that style because <laughs> he is unable to help Rika yeah. in that way. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you, as an opera singer, can you explain to me Kanako oh. Murakami's um, iteration of Tosca? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, why do you want to talk about her Tosca when we can talk about her Carmen? Oh, okay. My. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I, I like literally could not. The, it, that girl singing the Carmen, it didn't sound French, it sounded like Creole. She was doing Mariah Carey-esque riffs. Maybe she should have pre-recorded it. Um, oh my gosh, the music is so offensive. <laughs>
今の村上佳菜子を褒めていきます。よくコントロールしています。The Carmen, or the Tosca rather, I was interested in because she's not doing just like the normal hodgepodge medley of arias. She's actually doing like that final whole depth scene. So it's interesting because she's not doing like an isolated extractable piece. She's doing an actual scene from the opera, complete with death. But of course, in the death, he dies, but she suddenly opens her costume <laughs> and bleeds everywhere at the end. So that was like a unique choice, but so it music was, was it, it, the little red was appropriate. What's appropriate is she's suddenly portraying the man. <laughs> like there, there, it's that the lost. Lo no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's the man and the woman, the tenor and the soprano, and then the soprano is singing. But the t because the tenor has died, so she rips it open, and then you're like, wait, the woman is dying? I was a confusing. She needed. Archer Demetrium to be there to rip yes. open his for the blood. Yeah, I was confused by by what was happening, and it wasn't the Michelle Kwan music edit or the Irina Slutskaya music edit. So I was confused. It was musically interesting, but she didn't quite play the scene. So then you were like, well, then why don't you just go with kind of a general medley of Tosca hits? So I have to say, I was confused why she was competing here because she didn't have a full arsenal of triple jumps, and she right. was very happy with what she did do on the ice. But what she could perform was so non-competitive with the other ladies that I was really kind of surprised. They must be getting very good sponsor money to keep going in Japan, to keep putting yourself through this. this is well, it's, it's kind of like a Mao question, but not the Mao level. <laughs> like, but it is the same thing. Like, what, what are you doing? Yeah. You just, I don't know. I don't know. Especially in Japan, where I feel like the shows would be enough. Mm -hmm. You know, she has some credits. She won that Four Continents once. You know, did you? Yeah, in 2014. Oh, no one else was there. They were all at home. <laughs> oh, Getting... I went. Yes, that was yep. right. That's right. <laughs> well, she's yeah. a junior world champion. Okay, that's and she got a couple medals. I think at Skate Canada, but okay. I um, no, it's interesting because she does perform particularly well at national. She knows how to hit when she needs to. But to me, I was just. Didn't see a whole lot of improvement, and there were the so many. Went for it though. Yeah, yeah, and I at home was like, huh. But there were what? so many exciting talents here that coming up. So, what do you make of Mai Mihara? Because to me, this is really interesting because everything that Rika Hongo lacked, I thought that she had the lovely edges. She had this. Okay, I have to ask you, the yeah. music for Mai Mihara. It is definitely a soundtrack, and I think, I believe the, the song is from, it's called The Art of Time Travel. It sounds okay. like a Disney movie from the 90s, and I was like... The three skate, the cinderella -y thing or yes. whatever, that Yuka choreographed, yeah. It mm -hmm. looked like, it sounded like one of those Disney movies about like the two dogs and the cat and the journey home, that <laughs> homeward bound. They're walking on a can and the river or something, yes. yeah. 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 <laughs> I was wondering if you got that as well. Yeah, doing. well, I didn't get much of anything okay. from her. I'm really sorry. I was like, the music was drab. It was kind of empty. Like, I, she wasn't really feeling it too much with transitions. She's um, love. No, I can't. I don't want to even say lovely. She's consistent. Mm -hmm. She has good knees. She has good nice qualities. There's not a lot of presence. No, it's just totally forgettable. I, I guess forgettable is the word I think of. But like, I almost offensive. forget that I just watched her. Not but offensive. Very, very pleasant. Not a threat. Yeah. A Good. safe bet for that team. And I think that there's a lot that she could work with moving forward. Okay. She was very shy in person interviewing her. You know, a very shy. I mean, obviously she's new with the media on that level, on the Grand Prix level. So it was just interesting okay. watching her practice because you've got... Ashley and Gracie, who both have a lot of presence, whether or not they're skating well, your eye right. is drawn to you know their body language and everything, and then you would watch her, and she's kind of quiet, methodical, workmanlike, but 
Whereas Mao, when she when Mao moves an arm, the every the whole audience, you know, looks. Yeah, at what she feel does. it. Yeah, exactly. It just she just doesn't have that kind of projection yet. So and it, it's it comes down. I know it sounds frivolous, but it comes down to the costumes too. The dresses. I mean, they all are also kind of like frumpy in a way, and like dress, just kind of looks, unassuming. Unassuming. The dress looks like what Jennifer Lee wore to her piano recital in circa 1995. <laughs> at you know the Episcopal Church and and playing right yes was her playing memorable? <laughs> um, yeah yes. <laughs> okay, okay. She played well, the Nutcracker she... and did a very nice job, Jonathan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very You've good. Been but there. yeah, you you remember the '90s? How they were? Oh, oh yeah. She, <laughs> all she the shoulder pants. I mean, I just wonder like. Um, both Mahara and Taguchi for me are not like stars, but they're consistent and kind of will end up, you know, in top tens. So here's the thing about Taguchi. She, she is one hell of an athlete. When you watch her skate, the triple F. She could beat me up, no problem. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm like. <laughs> so I think that we need to have a new term for the kind of program that she's giving us with Shahrazad. I mm -hmm. felt that it was Halloween costume choreography. So you're dressed as Scheherazade, you give us a couple of the arm movements, and right. in two minutes, I'm done with you pretending to be Scheherazade, because I am not okay. convinced. Two minutes? Yeah, she that's longer it. than I think I last with her, yeah. okay? <laughs> okay. But again, she's trying in the beginning. We, we have the costume, we have token arm movements. There's not really a program. <laughs> That is right. convincing as Scheherazade, but there is a lot of jumping talent. It's just, to me, it's not the right music. People haven't invested in figuring out who she is yet, and to me, this program is right. forgettable. Well, and is she another Massimo one? They are, like, all with Massimo there. I mean, I just know him as the handsome guy that would sit, like, or, you know, like, in the Kiss and Cry with Marina, but, like, I was like, he has a full-time job in Japan. Every single girl here had, like, both programs done by him. They haven't found it yet. She has like a majority Tanya Harding quality <laughs> to her in that those jumps are enormous and they have huge arc and all these sorts of things. But man, does she she comes out there and it's a bit, um, it is a bit masculine. It's a bit <laughs> the overall approach. It's tough. Um, and I kind of like it because I'm like intimidated by it, but it doesn't but that create- needs hard driving forceful music to kind of play off of that strength yeah. that she has. I think so. I think so. She needs her speed soundtrack program or whatever yes. to go barreling down the ice and just go for it. Yeah. Something other than Scheherazade. I mean, yeah. Because I was thinking, Midori Ito's program, then, then they, they edited the music right before the 92 Olympics. She originally had one music edit and they changed it to kind of emphasize that unique speed and power that she has. And even though she was not the most artistically beautiful skater, it really kind of lifted her up. Yeah, of course. Maybe Wakaba needed to ask her, but in the, uh... <laughs> ah, so, except she'd be the person, like, killing the... <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, again, I think that we could, you know, go to ballet class and right. stretch a little bit at times. Awesome. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But overall, I, I think that, obviously, she's a big talent, but... But, and you wonder if these two, maybe not superstar program skaters right now, um, if they go solid, are they going to randomly knock our girls out of their three spots? Uh, you... I don't think it's random. So I think yeah. that they've been consistent throughout the season and that they're set up uh, yeah. quite well. And it, I think a lot can happen between now and the end of March, but I, I think that they're in position and that the American ladies are not in line to get three spots at this point, but they could improve. And we haven't yeah. seen, you know, we're going off. Like, of like these kinds of like middle solid B skaters, they're the ones that are going to be a big threat randomly. Yes. Yeah. Because they're going to be clean, I feel, you know. They also have to peak for now, so who knows what's going to happen later on in the yeah, season. Very true. It, very true. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Wakaba improved here, and I thought that what impressed me is that she rose to the occasion. You know, she needed to do well here to break through to make the world team and she delivered. And because earlier in the season I you know, there was talk that maybe Hara could have won Skate America and the program kind of fell apart a bit in the free skate. She right. also performed much better here and I thought, here are two girls that are younger trying to break through and both did. 
Well, there is a big case for it, yeah. Whereas sometimes at U.S. Nationals, we see a girl with potential. We say, oh, she could break through. And five years later, we're saying the same thing. So I really appreciated... The delivery that. on the potential. Yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, answer this next care question carefully, but what did you think of Marin Honda? Oh, I don't have to think very hard because I fell in love with a young girl named Fernanda this year. Can we talk <laughs> oh about my it? God. I was like, I can't. You know, we always use the term, what a breath of fresh air. No, I want you to really think about it. I want you to really think about like opening the door and just like being like, ah, ah, right after time. a cold. I sound like Fran Drescher right now, but like Daffodils. when you have a cold. Yeah, when the cold finally leaves. A big deep breath and just flakes that stay on, the on my nose and eyelashes. Exactly. That's Silver white winters that melt into spring. <laughs> Marin Honda, you are one of my favorite things. Like it is. Like, it's, a, it's effervescent. It's a breath of fresh air. I don't know why. I mean, I know she had obviously some flip issues in the free, but I was like, her components, in my opinion, if we, what are the point of components if we just like use them to hold people in place? So until I really felt it, that her skating, both for the short and the free, I would have awarded those Malasada points for a talent like this. However, I think they're trying to set up the other two ladies and send them off to the world championships in strong Yeah, form. Uh, yeah, I, I mean... I think that's an improper use of components, because to me, this had the edges, this had the choreography, this yeah. had all of the things that you look for in a special. It had that it factor that made you feel. It made me, I just like, her program, I mean, the music is called Smile, right? And like, I did the whole time. All I could do is like, this is lovely throwback, like awesome, just wonderful, happy skating. And it's good. They took the Lutz out of the short, right? Yes, the, the okay. combo. Yeah, yeah, the Lutz, okay. yes. <clears throat> um, but I just love everything about it. I almost wish for her the Olympics were in 2019. Yeah. I it's like I, I'm, I fear that her timing is like just a little off because like I, I would love to see her like on the podium at an Olympics eventually. Like, it's just so encompasses everything I love about skating. Well, hopefully she'll just keep skating and skating and skating, and this will. <laughs> because I also give us a whole. I know that her coach is one of your favorite people in all of skating. <laughs> she, she, and, and, and at Nationals, she had um, black leopard nails. Really? So I, I should try to find like a good still shot of it. But when like, I saw them like hug someone, I was like, oh, oh, oh yes, good for so you. Last okay. season, she said that Marin Honda is the most talented skater that she had, but she wasn't yet the hardest worker. But oh. she was hoping that she would find consistency. And she certainly found more consistency. I think she struggled with the Lutz, especially in the short program earlier this season. She was second at a lot of domestic competitions where she would finish like 0.4 below Rika Kihira who didn't compete here. Yeah, because she was third at Junior Nationals. Yes, and that was like the sky is falling, but she didn't have to peak for Junior Nationals. And then, right. as you right. told us, she Karen Kadavid it at the Grand Prix Final. So... And then, you know, karma's a bitch because I am also... And I got the flu right after Christmas. I was like, this because you made that comment about Marit Honda. <laughs> well, I just read a book about Joan Rivers and they were talking about karma and how, you know, she used to make all those jokes about Julie Andrews calling her on the phone about her throat. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Too soon, Dave. Too soon. Oh, my gosh. You went there. You went there. Oh, my gosh. I well, the, the interesting thing about also the Japanese nationals... Mm -hmm. A couple of things. The amount of emotion you saw after everyone's performance, to me, that's always an indicator of how stressful those nationals are. Yes. And you saw like everyone just be like, oh, at the end, like that must be crazy. I also loved their little icons in the corner. You know how we have the technical score because thing? They were deducting the GOE. Yes, they would show you GOE, and then at the end, they like have it in the column. I mean, that was not skating pretty. protocol level judging going on which we love I, you need it's helpful to know that like nbc had those little dots or something Tara and johnny had that they would maybe sound like they were in the know that would be <laughs> yeah if they could just look at that they could be like oh, that's about a plus two and it was interesting because then you would actually see them reward them correctly unlike Koliato and he falls on a quadruple lots and they're like plus a million goe and you're like um, i don't think that's right but they were doing it correctly and it was interesting to see them do that um but there was one other, what was I going to say? Well, there was, oh, when you talk about all of the emotion, 
yeah. all of the emotion about how stressed you are at Japanese nationals. And then you have our friend Satoko, whom I love. <laughs> but she did not look very excited, um, moved to be winning her third national title in a row in Japan. There were girls who were eighth in eighth place who were ecstatic with their performance. Yeah, exactly. Here was Satoko. Well, but, but remember that was always Satoko. Like I always remember like her with that coat and they're sitting there and she's like so excited and Satoko would be like, yeah, okay, all right, whatever. Actually at that same four continents in 2014, like you saw her be very business about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's her coping mechanism with all that. I don't know, but. Um, I did notice here, I was looking at her jumps to see if they were around and on the let's toe combo, I would maybe here give it under rotation for the toe, but then I was thinking Shidamano would do one carrot on the left, two on the toe. And it's going back to the rules of what is a true under-rotated jump, what is a true downgraded jump. Is it anything below at this point we're saying the quarter, but Satoko's jumps still do scare me. She's obviously working on trying to improve them. I wonder if she should go back to doing the two double axle triple toe combos at the end for the Olympics, yeah. if that's going to be a safer bet. Yeah, because she did have better better marks with those, I feel. Okay, a couple things. Shinamano, speaking of Japanese nationals, won his Paris title, and there were no other competitors that year. He was the only competitor, so that's when he won his Paris national title. I'm just saying, maybe you should like lighten up on your analysis of these girls' rotations. <laughs> and then I want to wear like a T-shirt at Japanese nationals that says, Sotoko can under uh, wait, what are the I wanted to say Sotoko can under rotate her jumps and I don't care at all. <laughs> like <laughs> kid. Because I don't care. Mm -hmm. I just don't care. I just love her programs. I love her skating. I don't care. I noticed that she's riddle. building this program. Now when she does the footwork to Mars, I felt like she was really coming alive and giving more than she's given us before and becoming a more powerful skater. She has a really good um, musical pulse. Mm -hmm. So she's building now when the music is building. Yes. This was, and, and you can tell the skaters that have musical pulse. Like, um, I always thought Jeremy Abbott had musical pulse, which then made me always wonder if it was smart for him to skate to those like slow things because the dancer inside made them slow and kind of soupy instead of more aggressive. But you see her follow the musical pulses, and I love it. Also, her program by Tom Dixon, who did some of Jeremy's programs. There and it he is. He won the Grand Prix final back in the day, Jeremy. He sure did. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I really enjoyed her program much more than anything that I saw at Russian Nationals last week. I thought her program just has such class to it. You know, and it's such a, it's that it's a, style of skating is something that I respond to. It's that testament to, to Lori's detail, I think, also in the planets and Tom's like beautiful grace that he brings out of her. And I think it's a combination. It's, it's her and it's also her the people she's choosing to surround herself with choreographically. Yes. I, I think, yeah, it's and beautiful. Coach, you know, uh, Mia Hamada every single day, you know, working on that the same way we see from Aaron Honda. So I think that that really... Um, you, you use the word uncluttered. Yes. And that's the perfect word for what it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It sings, you know, in it, a way. It breathes. And yeah. it breathes and sings, and, and not like the woman who's singing it in Shoma Uno's program. <laughs> I, again, I'd rather have her than the lady who's singing in uh, Kanako's Carmen program. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Shoma Uno, because he was in second place after this short program. Dave, can I be really annoying and bring up one more girl? Yes. I want to talk about Yuna. Shurela. They, um, only because, do you remember the movie The Incredibles? Yes. With a fashion designer, and she's like, no capes! Yes. <laughs> and that's how I always felt. You and Jenny were always like, no gloves! <laughs> no blah, blah, blah. And literally, the reason she was 17, one of the reasons she was 17 after the short program, even though she was third in the long, is because that glove got caught in the toe pick of her skate in that spin. It like comes undone, the spin comes to a screeching halt. I'm sure there was a costume change or a costume deduction. And in my head, I just thought, no gloves, like no capes. I thought that was the perfect example of that. And that's God, all I have to say about it. Yeah, it, I hope she learned it. <laughs> so uh, moving on to the men, we had, um, Machida in fur. Not Machida, sorry. <laughs> I loved Machida. I loved his Beethoven program. Why my notes are all... I, 
<laughs> you had Shoma Uno in second. Yuri Katsuki was in sixth place after the short. <laughs> and I'm just very upset with some of these things here. I have to tell you, Jonathan Byer, I think that Yuri Katsuki deserved to win that Grand Prix final. Well, you know, I think Yuri, obviously we've segued for the people that are like, what are they talking about? Um, this is the Yuri on Ice, the real Grand Prix final. <laughs> Um, I felt like they knew it was too cliche if he had won. I was going to feel that it was too cliche in a Harry Potter kind of way if he did win. Yeah, and it was too final. Now they have to come back for season two. If he had won, it would have felt like too much closure, so they had to keep you guessing. What is this going to do with the relationship when they're competing against each other and he's coaching them and they're dating? I mean... That way, it's a smart move. I'm intrigued how they handle it. I'm very intrigued how they're about to handle this. It's going to be fascinating. Well, I, have to I, tell I, have to tell you, I wasn't sure if they were really gay or if this was just an anime kind of androgynous thing for the, like, the first that, part. Because we've seen a lot of skaters before where we, they loved hair gel more than men in, in clubs in the UK. And I was a little bit confused about what was happening. And then I realized, no, this is a love story, which I thought, okay, obviously. Yeah, this, at first I was like, because I know there's that like fan fiction, there's yes. that whole yes. South Park even did an episode about it, like this like anime kind of like gay love thing. But I was like, no, this is too Wait, obvious. So Kyle this and is Stan really... in South Park, are they a couple or not? Um, well, no, I think they create them as one in an episode. Like <laughs> the girls are drawing an anime about them in this style, and it's exactly the same thing. But it's it's incredible. Mm -hmm. I found it a little more intriguing to like I was anticipating what the final episode was going to be because I was really intrigued who was going to come out on top maybe a little more so sometimes than I was about the actual Grand Prix final <laughs> do you think that there were too many pork cutlet bowls that were had no because I think he really did he really did a good job mm -hmm. I think he's suffering from PCS things because of the year previous and he didn't have that strong of early early events I think that's mm -hmm. what it was uh huh now I have uh -huh. to say they're so on top of everything, right? And they, they're really, they pay attention. Like some of the spins that they're doing are actually level four spins with the anime. Yeah, and then they stop to explain it sometimes, those little girls. And then he does a quad flip at the end of the program and I'm thinking, come on, come on, girl, yeah, I, come on. Yeah. Like we yeah. pay attention to such details here. And then yeah, we have the Hail like, Mary oh. pass of all time. Yeah, it's pretty. And then, well, even like the Canadian character who like, doing all these like the the technical level of the skaters on the show mm -hmm. are quite hilarious like i was like oh my gosh like we're freaking out because we have two quad lutzes and two quad flips like on the scene right now but in their mm -hmm. version like everyone's got one i was like oh my gosh these people are crazy and as long as you skate to arrows you can do whatever you want it's i'm i think the inner monologues because you're always curious about what they think i know like sometimes when i'm singing in an opera like sometimes i'm really in it and sometimes i'm like oh i have to remember to pick up fabric softener <laughs> like so or like sometimes like trying to i don't in any case the inner monologue can be very hilarious and they the way they've done it especially with the swiss character who comes to a sexual climax at the end of his performances every time. Um, like yeah, Adolf Hitler did in his speeches, allegedly, yes. Okay, okay. fair enough. Um, it was pretty funny. Yeah. I, I, they chose to like what they think skaters must be thinking about while they skate. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. Well, unfortunately, none of the... Um performances here made me quite as excited as the Swiss skaters, though I did enjoy uh, Shomo Uno very much at Japanese Nationals. Though I have to say he has got to figure out his landing position, because this is something where this was such a great performance, except that he turned out of all three quads. Technically he didn't turn out of the last one, he just had a Tanya Harding edge that went on forever, and we <laughs> did not check the landing on the third quad, but this was a clear problem, and it well, so now he's with Alex in Chicago, right? And he's been there a couple times. Because yes. even... Um, and do you know who the else e is there with him this week? Is <laughs> I don't know. Gold. Are we allowed, are we allowed to say that? Alex and Rasha for a week to kind of get a little bit change of scenery. And there's nothing like that kick in the pants, as we could see when we met Alex and Rasha. Right. He's yes. not joking around. I'm intrigued to how what that... I'm intrigued technically what it does for Shoma because I don't, I don't think Shoma's having 
um, maybe the same kinds of issues Gracie is having. I think he's having an actual technical issue that needs adjusting. So I'm intrigued why they chose him in particular. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that came about. I'm okay. Yeah. And for the Gracie thing, that's kind of like back of your roots, which either created the deep-seated problems or... <laughs> yeah, I think both. Or different, uh, yeah. So I'm intrigued to see. I hope that everything works out great. And interesting she interesting thing, though, is that our friend, you know, was saying that Gracie did Alex's off-ice class where he has them, you know, walking in handstand. And I was thinking, you know, if Gracie could stay there, Apparently she's only supposed to be there a couple of days, but imagine if she stayed there for a couple of weeks and showed up at nationals with guns and and coming. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be would the shake up of all shakeups, you know. Yeah, it would give you a reason to look at her again in a new way. Yeah. But I think that if you if you left someone who's um, a little bit um, excitable of a coach, it could certainly. I'm sure he's not just giving Gracie a lesson and not saying anything. I mean, he's a very passionate person, so I imagine... Well, see, the way it was painted, in my opinion, from like an outsider standpoint, was that she left Alex to find her artist within, mm -hmm. right? It was because she was Max airing in, you know? Well, when she got to Frank, he said that he wanted the Gold Sisters to learn to skate like girls, is what was allegedly the quote <laughs> that has been bandied about. She, she came out at that short program in Boston, and we were like, whoa. But she, made she her not. Look like Grace she, Kelly. That was, she's got that. She's yeah. got that. She knows how to do a nice program. Now let's get her back on her game. So she maybe, looked like maybe Frank come. took her to the movies with himself and Maribel. Uh, and that's <laughs> what happened. I mean, that was what. <laughs> Yeah, which maybe is in her inner drive. In yeah, the white maybe, Christmas maybe. dress and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, totally. But getting back to Shoma Uno, are you as excited by this program as I? I mean, what do you make of it? Because comparing to the, pro I feel like he's one of the men who has an actual program because so many of these men are just trying to do quads. And to me, I forget that I'm watching an IJS program. He gives me a little bit of the Malasada. I mean, the bestie squat into the spin at the end of the program is so different from these formulaic programs. Well, he's, he's a dancer among men, yes. right? And I know he looks up to Dice Gate, who literally, literally is my favorite male skater of all time. Mm -hmm. So I'm already going to be all about him. But I looked back at that program I was trying to think of the other time, and it was it, it is the Legend short program. It's a modern dance program, and I kind of want to see him dance more because he's so good at dancing. Okay. I do think these are beautiful programs, um, but I want to see the modern edge. Does he get the Sonia Biancetti points? Oh, yeah. Well, no, she, like, called him, like, he has much potential <laughs> as if he, like, just came on the scene as, like, a young person. But she did like his skating, but, um, yeah, she didn't jump into it too much. <laughs> did Sonia like Medvedeva's program? She she appreciated Medvedeva. Mm -hmm. She did. She wasn't so hard. She was just. It was almost like book reporting. Yes. <laughs> like she did this. It was impressive. She did this. Um, but I think in general, maybe her comments. She called everything like an over rotational mess. The the choreography of certain programs. And I think I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I she's one of my end all be alls. Also, like that book is amazing, but. Um, I met her. I think Shoma captures real skating. Yes. Oh, I'm very jealous. I'm she very jealous. Exactly. She's like my spirit. She was? She was subdued when I met her. So. Okay, that that makes sense to me. She's very like dignified. Yes. Calculating. Yeah. She was saving it for her blog. You know, she didn't want to let all the secrets out how she felt. About exactly. The rotational messages. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But what did you think about the other men here? Because I have to tell you is that there were some, I felt like it was Shoma and Angela Nigadidoff performing The Mummy for the rest of this competition. Amazing. Amazing. Well, also Shoma, is Yamada a new addition to their team? No, that she, he's always been in that school. I just don't think that she travels or, you know, travels with uh, him. Uh, I see. Okay, because, you know, I wasn't used to seeing her around him. I didn't know that she had an influence there. And then I wondered also, I was like, did they, have they asked her to help with these things? So he has okay. been with her and in her school, but she doesn't okay. do the traveling. And, I missed that. Okay, yeah. that makes total sense. Yeah, um, I mean, Takehito Mura's been, like, I feel like he competed with Nobuo Sato at one point. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> like, it's been around forever. Um, he was really mummying programming it during <laughs> Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto Number no. 2. I felt like he wasn't doing any of the Tarasova choreography that we come to expect from this music. But man, just, he does hurl his body into that choreography. And I actually thought, like, after they put him in first, after the short, I was like, they'll, I feel like they're going to let him go to Worlds. Mm -hmm. And I think it was his own fault, like just on the Grand Prix, just kind of like forfeits the second half of the the program. As Dick Button would say, don't fall off the beam, Sasha, don't fall off the beam. <laughs> well, well, both of them did, yeah. <laughs> um, because... Keiji Tanaka the, is a very talented skater as well, but he kind of loses the momentum and... He... I never want to be reminded of Catalini and Lenote when you're skating. <laughs> well, no, I think of Maya Useva in, in um, KG's um, Long, right? Isn't that their 94 Olympic music? Yes. With it, when he's dragging that. her with the ponytail? <laughs> Another program I'm just not particularly yeah. fond of. They at least tried. I don't think KG's even like really trying. It, they're pretty, to me, the, especially the free is a total miss. Mm -hmm. It's a swing and a miss. And it, he's a little, he's a little charmless. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm he sorry to say that. He doesn't have the it factor, we'll say. He really doesn't, and I don't know that it can be drawn out. Hmm. But uh, who cares what I think? I'm sure they'll try anyway, but like, I, it's just, you know, when Sandra said that Hanyu had a casual style, mm -hmm. something about Keiji's style is a little apathetic. Yeah. And so it's kind of flippant or like... I think he needs to you know? spend some time at in a rink where people are skating with more presence, presence and bigger, yeah. and yeah, some of that will be go a long up. way because Mora really has that, and you know he Mora skates big, mm -hmm. he skates tall, like in those old school Paul Wiley ways that you wish Max Aaron did or something. Just from the chest, it's like throwing himself around, mm -hmm. and so you're intrigued. <laughs> As to what's going to happen with KG, I was just like, oh my gosh, I might skip it other, on other events. Oh, I'm sorry to say that. But I guess not, because I keep repeating myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we wrap things up, what was your moment of the week? Oh gosh. Um, oh gosh. There are so many. I want to say, I'm going to just give a few. Mm -hmm. Just Okay. I'm going to give it to Mao's short program, Spin, the hops that she yes. times perfectly. That was such a moment. Um, one of the moments is finding um, Anna Pogorolaya's coach on Instagram. That's How about the moment. Him with that little Speedo today and the umbrella? And the little jumps on the, I mean, that, that was a find. William that Tran definitely... ran into him in Thailand and said that he was at Worlds, and Anna Pogorolaya's coach said that Anna deserved to beat Ashley according to Facebook. Okay, well, there you have it. <laughs> Enjoy Thailand. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, and I guess Marin Honda just in general, mm -hmm. just being, and I did watch the television show that her sister was on. And what did you make of it? It's kind of like a horror movie version of Mrs. Doubtfire in a way. <laughs> <laughs> But like a scary housekeeper that comes into like the home where the mother has died and the housekeeper will do anything you tell her to even if it's kill people or whatever and Marin Honda's sister just like Marin is a bright light in that show they've got a they've got some good genes going on in the Honda and household sister even younger who apparently is the the real talent in the family well then I can't wait for her because and Mia Hamada these... said that the youngest sister is more athlete than performer Oh, because Maureen is, is a good athlete, but she's a really, it's the performance that's really like grabs me by the heart. Yes. How about you, Dave? What was your moment of the week? Well, I was, of course, very nervous for how some of my favorites were going to do. So I was very relieved that Marin Honda performed as um, we had hoped that she would. But I think my moment of the week was my outrage about the Grand Prix final on Yuri on Ice. Yuri robbed, on. Jonathan. Oh, robbed, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't leave feeling robbed. I left felt I felt like this was good. This was no, good, and it was Katsuki's very. Katsuki's performance was my MK moment of the week. I felt that. I good for you. Good for you. I like the best then. <laughs> but I am so happy that Baron Honda is your MK moment of the week. I feel like we are just spreading joy and positive skating everywhere. 
like a sunshine. It's just like em emits from her, like yeah. All of we'll give her all of the points. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> ten, ten, ten. And I want, and I want those points to be sixty percent of the free state. Sixty percent. Yes. I'll Sonia would say, to hold an edge, smile, and look sexy. Bye, everyone. <laughs>